Hey there guys, so today marks the 30th anniversary of my favourite British sci-fi comedy of all time, Red Dwarf. I have been such a huge fan of the sitcom since I was 8 years old. I remember collecting the DVDs and I still have them today, but they're all on Netflix now so I recommend you go check it out if you've never heard of Red Dwarf. The reasons why I love Red Dwarf, it's not in my top 10 favourite shows of all time, it's definitely in my top 20. The reasons why I love it is the characters, the writing, the comedy, the stories, the science fiction concepts. So I wanted to do a tribute video based on the 30th anniversary and it was either do a top 10 favourite episodes of all time or do a rankings video based on the seasons, all 12 seasons. And since my channel focused more on ranking videos, I'd rather just do that but if you want me to do a top 10 favourite episodes just comment down below and I'd be happy to do that. But let's get started. Now, reason before I go in, I'll just make a few rules. This is my own personal preference. If you have your own list, please comment down below. I'd love to see it. But let's get started with number 12. At number 12, my least favorite series of Red Dwarf is series one. Now, I did a video a short while ago why I despise series one. And if you like series one, all the power to you. But to me, series one is really bland. I struggle watching this series. The jokes aren't funny half the time. The production value looks cheap. Lister Rimmer just argued. The cat was annoying. My personal recommendation is just watch the first two episodes, The End and Future Echoes, and go straight to series two. Number 11, we have series 10. Now, series 10 goes back to the format of the earlier series. It's filmed in the studio, it has the main four characters, and there's some decent episodes like Trojan, The Beginning, Fathers and Sons. But with series 10 to me, I rarely go back and rewatch it because there's nothing there that's iconic to Red Dwarf. And number 10 is series 8. Now, series 8 made some changes in the format, the team are in prison, the Red Dwarf crew are brought back to life. Now, Series 8 is a hit and a miss for me. I like they were trying to do something different, and there's some really good episodes like Cassandra, Only the Good, and Cry TV. And that one scene in Only the Good when Cry surprises Katansi on Have a Fantastic Period is hilarious. And we also get a young Max Branning in this series, and I like how the series focuses on Lister and Rimmer to make up for the absence of Rimmer in the previous series. But on the downside, there are some problems to Series 8, some major problems. I don't like the whole changes they made for the whole series. It should have been half of the series and go back to the old format. That's what we loved about Red Dwarf. Uh, there's some really bad episodes in this series. And I don't like some characters that push back like Crichton and Gutansi and the cat. To me, Series 8 doesn't feel like Red Dwarf half the time. At number 9 is Series 9, or should I say Back to Earth. Yeah, I don't think the fandom likes to talk about this series because it's very isolated and it doesn't feel like a comedy. I don't mind Back to Earth compared to many fans. I liked how it was more character driven. I liked the Blade Runner concepts. I liked the idea of them going to the real world and finding out they're actually a TV show. The thing I just hated was the Coronation Street stuff. It was just really lazy. And number eight is series 11. Now, Red Wolf took a four year gap after series 10 and it's a massive improvement. The only things I didn't like was Crichton's new style, the Starbar cockpit, and 20 Cut isn't really a great start, but series 11 to me is a decent series. There's some great episodes like Samsara, which had great writing, and Can of Worms, which is kind of polymorph free in a way, but I loved it how we get a cat focused episode. And number seven is series seven. Now I know a lot of fans don't like series seven because Chris Barrys leaves most of the series and losing Rimmer was a massive downfall. And they were starting to lose ideas and there's some really bad episodes in series seven like Epideem and Anna Archie. But to me, I have quite a soft spot for this series. There's a lot of episodes I love like Tinker by the Ride and Blue. And I thought Christine Contanity was gonna fail but she didn't. I loved her interaction with Crichton. And I loved the changes they made in terms of filming. And number six is series four. Now, series four is a really solid series. It's not on the same level in my top five, and it doesn't have those iconic episodes, but I will say that it has some iconic moments, like Lister killing a curry monster with Lager, the introduction of Ace Rumor, the introduction of Torky the Toaster, and Cat and Lister witness the execution of Winnie the Pooh is hilarious. At number five, we have the most recent series, series 12. Yeah, I'm surprised as you are, but series 12 to me ticks all the boxes. The writing was great, it was funny, it was good science fiction, the cast are at their best, I love all the throwbacks like Norman Levitt returns as Holly, the old sets, the talkie the toaster. If series 12 came out now for the 30th anniversary, it would have been a great tribute. 
At number four is series six. This came out a few years after the previous series and it made a few changes. Red Wolf itself is no longer there, Holly is gone, and it had a Monster of the Week format. But Series 6 is great. I could watch it at once because it has that rewatchability factor. The weakest episode would be Sirens, but it is a good episode. The two great episodes that stand out for me is Gundam of the Apocalypse, of course. It brought the Western genre into the sci-fi sitcom, which was such a bold move. And the other episode is Out of Time, which had such a great dark premise to it, and it ended on such a great cliffhanger that we had to wait several years for. And number three is Series 2. Now, Series 2 has the same formula as Series 1, but on so many improvements. The writing is tied to the cast are much more settled with their characters, they're not limited within the studio set, and the character dynamics are deepened. Now, compared to Series 1, where it's just pure banter, with Series 2, there are some pure heartfelt moments, like in Better Than Life. And they would actually go out and do something and it pays off for a great episode. And Norma Levitt's Holly really shines in this series. I really want to come back more, maybe possibly in series 13. And number two is series three, the one that changed Red Wolf the best in terms of filming, adding Crichton, futuristic props and sets. It's definitely the funniest series in Red Dwarf, with great concepts such as backwards and time slides. Maroon is such a great written episode. It goes back to the core relationship between Lister and Rimmer with rich dialogue, and Polymorph is just hilarious. And my favorite series of Red Dwarf is series five. Series five to me is just great British television. I mean, Series 5, all six episodes are great. The ones that really stand out for me is Hollow Sheep, Angels and Demons, Terraform, The Inquisitor, and Back to Reality, which is my favourite episode of Red Dwarf. Now, Red Dwarf Series 5 focuses on my favourite character, Rimmer. There's some great concepts to him. We get to see him fall in love, his friendship with the rest of the crew, and we also get to see him to become some sort of puppet-wielding lunatic. Series 5 is the most balanced series in terms of storytelling, science fiction, and comedy. Thank you so much for watching this video guys, go like, comment, subscribe, go check out my Facebook, my Twitter and my Instagram page. I just want to say happy anniversary to Red Dwarf, my favourite science fiction comedy of all time. And also, I got your back.